Welcome to Filmingo. The movie starts when Nick and his brother are talking about what is sex. They belong to a Christian family and know that it means having sex before marriage is a sin. But they believe that sex is the most awesome thing. That's why they want to get married as soon as possible. Nick tells his elder brother Toad that on his wedding night, he'll have sex ten times, but his fate becomes the opposite. Surprisingly Nick gets married before his elder brother. But even after getting married, fulfilling his long-standing desire to have sex still remains a challenge for him and for his wife who is also a virgin. Nick works in the army and strongly believes in his religious teachings. One day in a coffee shop, Nick is reading the Bible like his daily routine. Mary, a young girl from a Christian family, becomes interested in him when she sees him reading the Bible. She approaches him and talks with him. She asks him why he's reading the Bible. Nick says he wants to learn it because it's important. Mary asks if he is reading it with the intention of attacking the Christian's beliefs. But Nick says he reads it because he wants to know the word of God, so he can live his life for God. Mary smiles broadly hearing this answer, and they become friends. After a few days, Nick goes to Mary's house and they get closer. But Nick says it's not good, they shouldn't do things that they're not allowed to do before they're married, and says he's leaving now. Mary stops him and asks him what he means by, before they're married, does it mean that he wants to marry her? Nick says why she's asking that. And she says, because she wants to marry him. Nick gets surprised and says he also wants to marry her, but he didn't know what she was thinking about it. Mary becomes excited and says now they're engaged, but Nick says he'll have to talk to her dad first. Mary says he can talk to him later, the important thing is that he has her permission. Nick agrees and they both become happier. When their families give their consent and the wedding date gets fixed, Nick hears that he is going to Afghanistan for war, just the next day after his wedding. He tells his officer that he is getting married on the 18th and if they leave on the 19th, he will miss the honeymoon, but the officer says they will have to follow the orders. At their wedding, Nick and Mary feel so happy, and everyone is celebrating their wedding, except Thomas, Mary's dad, who doesn't seem to be happy with this wedding. After the wedding ceremony, the couple leaves to go to a cottage to spend their wedding night. Henry, Nick's grandfather, tells Nick what he should do on his wedding night, but Nick says he already knows that and doesn't want to talk about it. Mary's dad worries about her and asks her to call him in case of any need. When they're on their way, Nick feels so impatient that he's ready to do it in the limousine, but Mary says she wants it to be special, so they should wait for some more time. When they reach the cottage where they're to spend the night, Nick asks Mary to start having fun. Mary tells Nick to take it easy, they have all the night. After some moments, when they go to bed, Mary suggests praying first. Nick says the prayer quickly, but Mary says the prayer a little longer. After that, they finally decide to start the most awesome thing. But not long after, they hear loud crazy music that diverts them. They come out to the door and they see Liam, who is playing Scottish bagpipes music. They ask him to stop but he doesn't listen, so Nick removes the pipes from his mouth. Nick asks him what he's doing here, he says he's playing Scotland's sacred song to bring honor and prosperity. Nick says he can play this song somewhere else, but Liam says he will play this song here because he's paid to do so. Nick asks who paid him, and Liam tells Nick to see himself. It's Toad, who is doing a prank on them, and he himself is hiding behind. Nick asks him what he's doing. Toad starts laughing and says it's a wedding gift for Nick, he must have enjoyed it. But Nick doesn't like this at all and sits on the bench with a sulky face. After Liam finishes the song, they give them a present and leave. When Mary and Nick try to go inside, they see that the door got locked, and they can't open it after all the efforts. Mary suggests that they should return to the city with Toad, and stay in a hotel. Nick says it will take an hour to reach back, they should stay here somewhere in the woods. But Mary doesn't agree with this. So Nick sprints to stop Toad because he has left by now, but Nick chases the car and shouts to stop them. Toad says it's strange that they locked the door, but luckily he was there to help them. Nick sees a bucket in the car and asks about it. Liam warns Nick not to touch it. When they are going their way, Toad asks Nick if he is angry with him for what he did. Nick says he's not mad at him, he just wants to get to the hotel. Liam starts a conversation with them to get to know each other, but Nick tells him to stop talking, he doesn't want to know him. Toad says they will soon reach Everett, but Liam reminds Toad that he promised to take Liam to Ferndale, and that's the reason Liam accepted his job. Toad says it's getting late for Nick and Mary, and going there will take another hour. Nick also tells Liam that he can go there tomorrow. But Liam doesn't listen to them and says he'll play bagpipes until they don't agree to go to his destination first. So Toad decides to go to Ferndale. Mary tells Nick they'll get a hotel in Ferndale, but Nick says he left his wallet in his bag, and her dad has it. He says they will just drop Liam and return, but Liam says they don't just have to drop him, but also take him back when his business is done there. Nick asks how long will it take, Liam says about half an hour. Nick asks what's so important that he can't wait, and Liam says he's going to fulfill his dad's dying wish, that he brings a gift to his old friend, Hamish. 
When they reach his house, Liam tells them to follow his lead if anything happens. A boy opens the door and Liam says he's here to see Hamish, he and Liam's dad were friends in Scotland. The boy calls his grandfather, he becomes happy to see a Scottish. Liam tells him his name but doesn't tell his father's, so he may not recognize him. Liam says Hamish knew his father, he passed a year ago. Hamish asks for his father's name, but Liam first tells him the name of Hamish's wife, which increases the curiosity of Hamish. Then Liam tells him his father's name and says that Hamish's wife was to be his father's wife, but Hamish betrayed his friend. He took her with him and ran away to America. Now Hamish remembers Liam's dad. Liam says when his father was on his deathbed, he made a gift for Hamish and asked Liam to deliver it. Hamish asks what's that. Then Liam opens the bucket, in which he kept his father's piss, and he pours it onto Hamish. Liam says excitedly that he fulfilled his father's wish, and runs away. Nick and Mary were shocked to see that. When they leave Hamish's house, his grandson attacks them with a BB gun. They say they didn't know what Liam was gonna do, but he doesn't listen to them. They run away to escape from him, and they hide somewhere. After some time, Nick looks for his brother and Liam but doesn't find them anywhere. So Nick and Mary start walking along the road. Mary asks him what to do now. Nick says they can spend the night in the woods, it'll be a honeymoon suite for them. Mary says she didn't expect her wedding night to be like this, Nick says he also didn't expect that, but they should stop waiting now. Mary doesn't want it to be like that, but she agrees. They get into the woods and find a place behind the trees. They start kissing and lay on the ground. But a few moments later, Toad appears there and gets stunned. He asks them what are they doing. Nick says they didn't left any choice. Mary asks Toad about the car, and he says Liam took it. Then suddenly they hear the sound of bagpipes, and they understand that Liam is calling them. Toad asks them to get hurry before that boy comes again. Nick tells him to go, and says they will stay here. Toad shockingly asks him if he's serious, but Mary convinces Nick to go back so they could spend the night in a nice hotel, she says waiting one more hour won't make any difference. Nick agrees and they go to the car. Mary tells Liam that they thought he ran away, but Liam says he told them to follow him. They got into the car and headed back. When they reach the wedding hotel, Mary tells Nick he should be glad they didn't stay in the woods. Mary says she is going to her dad's room, to get Nick's wallet, and then they will go to another hotel. Nick asks her why doesn't she want him to come with her, she says he doesn't have to, he could stay here. Nick asks her if her dad is okay, he seemed tense today. Mary says he's okay, he's just worried about her. When Mary goes into the hotel, she overhears a conversation between her dad and Nick's grandfather. Thomas says he doesn't know Nick, he tried to meet him but he's always busy. He didn't even ask for his blessing before proposing to Mary. Henry says Nick serves his country, and it's a hard job. Thomas asks him why Nick rushed to marriage, he could get married after coming back from Afghanistan. While Thomas is out of the room, Mary goes into his room and picks up an envelope of wedding present money. Before she gets out of the room, her dad returns to the room. Mary hides behind the bed. Thomas, in deep distress, starts praying for Mary, because he thinks she's not safe with Nick. Mary tries to escape, but her dad sees her and asks her what she's doing there, is she alright? Mary says she's fine and explains about getting locked out of the cottage. He asks her why Nick sent her to sneak into the room and steal money. Mary says she's not stealing, it's already hers. She hurries to go out of the room, but Thomas says he'll come with her to see if everything is fine. Out there, Nick and Liam are sitting together when the grandsons of Hamish come there. Liam runs away and Nick hides. When Mary and her dad come there, those boys abuse Mary and tell her dad what they did with their grandfather. Nick comes there and tries to explain, but the boys don't listen and pour the same bucket on him. They come into Thomas's room, Mary gives Nick her dad's clothes and asks him to take a shower. While Nick's in the bathroom, Mary and her dad get into an argument about Nick. Her dad says Nick is not a nice Christian man as she described, a nice man doesn't get into a fight on his wedding night. Mary says it was not his mistake, it was someone else's. He asks then why those boys did this to Nick. He tells Mary if the marriage is not consummated, then it can be cancelled. And asks Mary to listen to God, they getting locked out of the cottage is a sign. He advises her that they should let Nick go and see what happens when he returns from Afghanistan. But Mary doesn't pay attention to his advice. When Nick comes out, he tells Mary they should leave now. Thomas tells them they don't have to go anywhere, they can spend the night here. Nick says they will get their own room, but Thomas says it's too late and since they are here, they can spend the night in this room. Mary says they're going to discuss it outside, but after coming out of the room, she asks Nick to run from there. Nick says her father will be mad, but she says she will deal with her father. He asks her about the money, and she shows him the envelope. Thomas comes out to look for Mary, and he thinks Nick took her away. Mary and Nick reach another hotel to get a room, but when Mary opens up the envelope, they see there's no money in it. They both freak out. Mary says her dad might have put the money somewhere else. 
Nick gets angry and says why God is doing this to him. Mary calms him by saying that it will work out, the night isn't over yet. They could find some woods or a barn and spend the night there, it will be an adventure. So they stroll around and try to find a place to stay, but they find it nowhere. Then they reach a nearby church. Nick says that God led them here. Mary asks if he really wants to do it in the church, and Nick says it is a gift from God, so they can do it here. Mary tells him to pray about it. Nick prays that if what he thinks is wrong, then may God show them a sign. They sit and wait for a while. After some time, Nick says he didn't see any sign, and Mary says they can start now. They get undressed, and are just about to start it when they hear someone's footsteps in the church. It's Thomas who reached here after searching for her daughter everywhere. Nick and Mary try to escape beneath the benches. Thomas starts praying and asks God to protect his daughter, and not let Nick fulfill his wicked intentions. Nick's grandfather also comes there and he is saying prayers in favor of his grandson. Thomas and Henry start saying prayers against each other. Nick comes out and asks them both to stop. Mary also comes out. They go back to the hotel, and Nick's grandparents give them their room to spend the night. Henry says he will guard the door, so no one could disturb them. Mary asks Nick to start it, but Nick says they must talk to her father, something's wrong with him. Mary says they don't have to talk to him, he's just worried about her and he'll be alright after some time. Nick asks then why her dad said all those things about him in the church, why he's against him. Mary asks him why he didn't talk to his brother who interrupted their wedding night. Then Nick says they will talk to them both. He can't spend nine months in Afghanistan with all this tension. They go to Toad's room and wake him up. Nick tells him that what he did was not good, he can't do it anymore because Nick is married now. Toad and Nick get into a fight, and Toad says it was Nick who did a prank, by getting married before him. Now people think of Toad as a loser. Nick feels sorry for his brother and tells him his day will come. Nick gets worried after coming out of the room. Then they go to Mary's father to talk to him. Nick says to him they didn't get time to see each other, but he assures that he will keep his daughter happy. Thomas says he saw his acts, he fights with people and steals money. Nick says that's not true, it's been a hard night. Thomas asks why he didn't talk to him and why didn't ask for his blessings before proposing. Nick says there never was a chance to talk to him, so he wrote a letter asking for his blessings, but Thomas says he never received the letter. He says Nick was afraid that Thomas will come to know his reality, and that's why he didn't talk to him. He's just a sex-crazed boy who wants to have his way with Mary. Only a person who is hiding something does that. Then Nick says he was stupid, he didn't realize how important it was to talk with Thomas, and he asks him for forgiveness. But Mary tells her father that Nick is lying, he's not been hiding anything, it's Mary who's been hiding something. She says Nick wanted to see him just like Thomas wanted to see Nick, but Mary didn't get them together, because she thought her dad would scare Nick away as he did with every other boy who ever dated Mary, and she didn't want to lose Nick. Thomas asks why he rushed to marriage, Nick says he didn't want Mary to worry about the future, he wanted her to know that he is hers forever. Then Thomas asks them to leave him alone. They come to their room, and Nick tells Mary that everything's fine, no one will disturb them now. Mary goes to the bath to get refreshed, and Nick does push-ups to make himself relax. Finally, they are ready to do it, but suddenly Henry knocks on the door and tells them Thomas is here, to give them a ride to the military base. Nick says he has to go in the morning, and his grandfather says it's morning. Nick removes the curtain from the window, and he sees the daylight. He becomes disappointed that he couldn't fulfill his wish. Nick gets ready to go to his base and Thomas gives them a ride in his car. Thomas says to Nick that he thought over it, and says this marriage has his blessings. Nick thanks him, and Thomas says he'll be waiting in the car. Mary tells Nick she has to apologize to him, because they had the chance in the limo and the woods, but she didn't agree. Nick says it's not her fault, it was God's will. And he says when he will get back, he'll spend all of his life with her. Meanwhile, Nick's officer comes there. He tells Nick that their mission is delayed for one day. Nick and Mary become happy to hear that. Nick asks for his permission to join tomorrow. They rush to the car and ask Thomas to get them to a hotel. They become excited to get a second chance. Finally, they reach a hotel and get a room. Nick picks up Mary in his arms and takes her to the room. They enter the room, and the movie ends as the door closes. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe for more such interesting videos. Thanks for your support.